What's going on guys? Kwasi for Kwasi, media and Kwasi animations. Today, guess what we're talking about? Uh, one of my favorite things, bruh, lighting. So with that being said, who you see here in the screen right now is my character Zuza from my series Versus. Uh, High Minister Zuza. She's not to be trifled with. All right, so she's not to be messed with because trifle means little or uh, annoying matters. So she's not to be, well, yeah, I guess annoyed. Nonetheless, man, my bad, let me stop ranting. So we have a camera in the scene. I don't have my overlay on, so we, don't, we have a camera in the scene. All right, and I'm gonna probably do this with things off. So I have my render settings at 100 right now. Of course, all of my stuff is defaulted because I'm gonna show you how to do a default scene. So if you set your scene up a certain way, you want it to stay that way, then you can just hit, you can create a default scene, but we'll get to that later on. And we're gonna go to our camera settings. We're gonna go to viewport display. We're gonna take our passport to, and we're gonna go to zero. I mean, go to one. All right, understand this focal length, I'm gonna show you focal length. This makes a difference in your lighting too. 50, they call it the nifty 50 in film, the film world, okay? So 50 millimeters is usually about where they start a lot of times, but then you also have a lot of 35 millimeter. And a lot of your cameras shoot at this focal length, all right? If you hit in and you go to the view tab up here, you see a clip start and clip in. If I take this clip start and say I go dot, I go 0.001, it really allows me to get closer to the model. So let's say I get really, I can get really, I'm talking about really up in there, but say if I go to 0 0.01, watch what happens. 0 0.1, I mean, I start to clip through her. All right. So that's good for when you're working with something and you don't want it to clip through and you're just trying to see what it looks like. All right. These things do matter, trust me, in, in, uh, in your workflow. But I tend to just keep it at 0 0.1, in which a lot of times that's the default, but in this case, we're just gonna keep it at point 0.1 because I'm not gonna be that close to her anyway. So your focal length, and I, like your focal length will allow you to get closer, zoom in and out, like look at how far away she is. Like at one millimeter, she looks like she is way, way back there. Versus if I go, let's say 100 and, let's see, 102 millimeters. And then I bring this up to stay up in her face. So now when you look at this, I'm gonna show you what the camera looks like now. See how stretched out the camera looks? Okay, because you know, in the settings, I changed my focal length, all right? So I'm gonna go back to 50 because I wanna be able to see what I'm, what I'm about to do. I'm gonna go back to one meter. All right, so it, it, Blender works in meters. You can change that. You can change your units, okay? Uh, I'm trying to think, of, remember where you do it. Oh, go, go into this tab right here, the scene properties and click units and you can change it from metric to imperial and it'll do it in inches. So when we go back, it's in, even though it's 10 millimeter now, right? I, it's actually allowing me to do this in millimeters or inches. So if you don't know how to do millimeters, then you might want to go back to meters because this is how inches work in millimeters, but I can also go like field of view. So it's like at degrees and it's a lot of little things to that. So I always say, keep it at the default of meters because it comes in default at meter, all right? So back to the thing. All right, done with that. We're talking about lighting. Let's go into our render view. So our render view, you see how it looks there versus just our preview. A preview looks like it's pre-lit, right? So a lot of times as a fool, you believe in that there's a light source there. There isn't. So when I hit Z8, okay, I hit Z and then eight. All right, there's no lighting. So I'm gonna put a light in. We're gonna work with multiple lights. So first we're gonna start off with an area light. I'm gonna show you what, how the area light works. All right, so I'm gonna bring it up, I'm gonna pull it back some. All right. And remember, it works on the same axes as everything else. These are your axes. This gimbal up here has your axis and we're in global. I don't use the local on this because it'll get confused. When I'm doing the characters and their rigs, I'll use local. But when I'm not using it, then I won't. Okay, so now when I have this light source, the light bulb, of course, see? The light bulb is where its settings are. You have light, and then you, you can change this light source to either one, but I started it off as an area light. So we're gonna deal with it as an area light right now. Okay? And you can also, again, once you come into your menu, shift A in the viewport, shift A, and you can go to light. Don't, we're gonna deal with light probe stuff later on, but right now we're dealing with light. Point, sun, spot, area, and three point lights. Now understand, this, 
This is a little bit more advanced. So again, we're not gonna get to that just yet. We'll play with that later. So we're doing an area light. And it comes out of the default power of 10 with a specularity of one, and it's a square. And we can make it a rectangle, a disc, an ellipse. So you go di disc, it turns into an ellipse. It gives like this. You can, I can literally make it like an oval shape or whatever. Okay, so, or e e um, ellipse. So we're gonna keep it as a rectangle for right now. You can do custom distance. You see how long it is right now. It's the default is basically 40 meters. I'm gonna go to one. And I always do a custom. Now in my settings, I'm gonna turn on my bloom, my uh, ocular inclusion, my bloom, and my screen space reflections. And the reason for that is because now when I start to cut on shadows, contact shadows, I want that light to come off of her a certain weight. And I'm gonna boost this to 120. It's white light right now. So now we're gonna to go to, oh, let me go back. I'm sorry, let me go back to square, not rectangle. No, apologize for that. All right, so now we're gonna see how it starts to lighten her up. And the further I go, the more it covers the front of her. So when you go to custom distance and go into distance, I'm gonna pull back. So I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Now this size shows you how big you can make the actual light source. So I'm gonna go up a little bit so I can make this light a certain way now. When we look at this, I'm gonna turn this off. You see how I can I can light this now? It creates a certain, I can find my lighting the way I want. And then we can create the right distance. All right, that's good right there. So when I hit F12, boom, she's lit. So now when you go to render out, because Sometimes I find, I, I used to do it too. Sometimes I find that when I hit render to get ready to render, render an animation, I realize I didn't have a, I have a camera, but no light source. So if I don't have the light source, guess what happens? I'm thinking it looks like this, right? This is just the material preview. You see the difference with the material preview on? All right, versus now when you look at the light source, it looks way different. All right, so when you're using your lighting, you wanna find lighting that's not going to actually clash with your your color scheme for your character but at the same time uh you have to pay attention to your world settings go to the world properties you have a background now you can add a uh, an actual environment shader to this we're not going to do that right now but this color can be any color in your background okay so what i tend to do is here is i go to rgb on the color and I'll, what you can do is hold your click button and scroll, I mean, push down. It's gonna highlight them and all of them are now ready and I'm gonna put in point 0.2, okay? Now, when I take this light source, I'm gonna turn it off. See how differently lit that is compared to when it was the other way? So if I take this and I, and I just bring the, the level down, see how her eyes pretty much go away? So a lot of this is affecting areas that have occlusion, meaning in other words, the dark spaces, okay? So if I take this back to, let's say 0.3, all right? But now you see where it is. So when we go back to RGB, you see how far it went down? Because here, this is, the, this is your value. So if I take my value back up to 0.5, there it is. Now my strength, I can go up to three and it, the brighter I make this, the stronger the light is. So I can even use this kind of as my core light source. So let's take it to 10. I can use it as my core light source. And then I can even turn on my light again and all the shadows are almost gone. So I'll go back to one. But with the light source, now you see how it looks. So a lot of times what you wanna do is find that spacing for your background. Again, this is something you play with. We're dealing with lighting. We're still dealing with light. We haven't gotten away from that. So it's an area light. Now I'm gonna turn the area light off. I'm gonna add in a point light. Now the point light, see it started here. The point light is circular, okay? I'll go to the side. So I wanna do this. Go to the side, I'm gonna bring it up. Now. Pretty much on the same deal, go up to that light. Pretty much on the same deal. When we go to the light settings, it comes in as a lower light. If I take this at 120, look how bright it is, <laughs> all right? All right, the specular allow, allows, it depends on what is reflecting. If something has a certain level of reflection, the specular will go down and it won't have as much brilliance coming from the light source. And I can beef this radius up as well. I can do a custom distance on it as well, say 0.1 and it actually changed how much it came through versus when it was at 40. Okay, so let's go to point one and then I'm gonna bring it down. Now, when I bring it down, it makes it brighter. When I beef it up, it makes it dimmer because it's filling up more space. Now, say if I go to my distance and can't crank it up, cut on contact shadows. Now you see when I turn those shadows, there's a certain occlusion around her hair that started. 
Okay, I know it's very difficult to see that, but it's actually right up in there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and beef the distance up some more. We're just finding that space. And remember, it's still high, it's, it's just bigger. So I'll pull it back some, and it changes the effect of the source. All right, it's like if I just hit G and I just move it, I just want it to just kind of like maybe accent her side here, all right? And I'll crank it up to 320. So I wanted to accent her side. We're gonna go into the camera view because I want to see this. And you see how it's just accenting her side? Matter of fact, let's bump it up to 500. All right, so it's accenting her side. Now I'm gonna cut on the area light, all right? And this time with the area light, I'm gonna bring it down to 60, okay? Because I just wanna, I wanna frame her face and we're gonna increase the distance. And on that point light, we're gonna make that 1200. I'm gonna change that color to red. All right, now, because the point light is like it is, I can make it smaller and it's gonna have less effect on the situation. But if I go point, say three, five, it's smaller now, come out. Now, because of where it is, it's not showing as much light on the actual surface of, on her surface. But you see where it's showing it at the bottom down here? Because again, your lighting will only affect as much as the character's actual textures show. So if the texture of the character won't reflect the light that well, like you can see it kind of showing back here behind her ear. <laughs> okay, so you have to take those things into consideration. So I tend to use point lights for front lighting. So if I turn this off, and I take it to take it to the front. You see what starts to highlight red? Our clothes don't even highlight red, do they? So when, I, so if I use, so that means I want to use a red light, huh? So if I go into my specular, because this is your this is your saturation. So if I take my saturation back to white, the whites are extra bright. So let's get rid of the point light. All right, we're gonna cut our area light back on. We're gonna get rid. We're gonna delete the area light, and now I'm gonna add in spotlight now spotlight is cool like to have when you want to do like head or like um, let's say headlights on a car or maybe even um street lights so i'm gonna beef it up to 320 and give it a custom distance we're gonna take the custom distance we're gonna make it 10 i'm sorry not 10 3 all right and we're gonna scroll i'm gonna push it down some because again it's not showing up that much is it all right now the difference here is i'm gonna cut on contact shadows you have a spot size with spotlight 45 degrees down to 30 degrees, you see how it gets smaller, down to 15 degrees, see how it gets smaller, or up to 90, all right? I'm gonna go back to 45. You even have a blend where it allows it to blend the distance of it. So I'm gonna scroll it up and push it up a little bit more. I'm gonna take this up to, let's say, two grand, all right? So again, you see the source of light is not shining, all right? And I think that's more because of her, not necessarily because of it. So now you see it when I increase my distance, now it's starting to light her up, all right? Because it wasn't long enough, my bad. So, start playing with those type of things. Now, if say I wanted to use this and we want to make it look really cool. So I'm gonna make this all black come out of here. And because there's no light in her eyes, I'm gonna go, this is me doing this now. I'm gonna go to her, the whites of her eyes, Zuza whites. Cause I, for my characters, I make two sets of eyes. I have their, uh, the whites of the eyes, right? And then their pupils, all right? So we're gonna go to the whites of her eyes. And we're gonna go down to emission strength. We're gonna type in two. We're gonna go to emission. And I'm gonna beef it up some until it starts to show by itself. So now I don't have to concern myself with a secondary light source because I don't want it. All right. For the front of her face. So on the spotlight, now watch what I do with the spotlight. And because I have it that big, I'm gonna take it to 10 grand. One, zero, one, two, three. Now, let's say, yeah. So I have the distance I want. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the cone down some more to 30 and turn this off. All right, now you see that kind of a cool look it gives. Let's see my camera, let's click the camera. Oh, I don't have the view on on the camera. Lock the view. All right, so you see how it's like, it just comes just over certain places and it gives us this cool little, you know, kind of thing. You know? So on the spotlight, I'm gonna come back and I'm probably gonna see this rotated on the Y. So I just wanted to just hit a certain part of it and you know, rotate it a little bit. Cause I just wanted to come off on a certain space. Now I'm gonna show you two different other lighting techniques. Now this is over top. Now we're gonna do a secondary light technique. We're gonna bring in the area light. This is what you call studio lighting. All right, my bad. I'll push it up. I'm gonna go ahead and make my changes. I'm gonna put this at 1500. Bring the speculator down to 0.5. 
I'm not gonna create a custom distance. I'm gonna cut on contact shadows. My heater just turned on and apologize for the background noise because it was, again, an idiot at my house. All right, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. rotate X, rotate X negative 90. I'm gonna push it back, take it down. Because this is gonna be the backlight. All right, we don't even call it that, backlight. All right, and we're gonna duplicate that light. You can hit Shift D to duplicate something. And I'm gonna take that, take that light, I'm gonna hit rotate, I mean, Alt R G, bring it back up again. This time we're gonna go G X. I'm gonna go rotate Y 90. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna, on the G, I'm gonna turn it a little bit. And I'm gonna turn this into like a, a dim blue light, kind of a bluish light. All right, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit because I want it to still kind of counteract. Now, I'm gonna cut this off it frames her a little bit better and it starts to get rid of a certain amount of shadow. So I'm gonna cut this back on because I wanna see what I'm about to do here. All right, so I'm gonna, there we go. All right, so now we we'll rotate a little bit more. All right, so I'm bringing Specula up because I want it to reflect a little bit more. So now you see her eyes are not showing, okay? So now in this case, I'm gonna definitely go ahead and add in another light source. Now this is when the point light comes into play. I'm gonna push forward a little bit, bring it up a little bit, I'll push it back a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take this to 60, we'll come in with that. Now I don't want it to reflect that much, so we're gonna go one on it, and then we can reduce that even further down. So now we just have a little bit of light in her face. I'm gonna cut on contact shadows, so now you see the shadow that showed up here. All right, watch, watch, watch right here where my mouse is. I'm gonna click contact shadows right here on the shadow. See how that shadow was in there? Now it's back. All right. And that's the shot. Now watch when I click it, here's the shot. And boom, okay? So it's about framing the light, all right? And again, this is just one way to do it. Now, if we wanna kinda do an all encapsulating thing, I'm gonna select all these parts because I wanna get rid of them. Now, I'm gonna add in a sun. Click the cinema and add in a sun. Now, here's a different one. The sun is a little bit more expressive. We're gonna hit contact shadows. I'm going to, now this one has a strength value. And if you go to say 100, okay, it gets really bright in there. Now 100 is super bright. I don't need it at 100, I'm gonna take it to 30 because it's not really much difference. I'm gonna bring my specularity down 2.5 and I'm gonna hit R, X, right, R, Y. And then I'm gonna rotate a little bit because I wanna catch a certain space on her. Matter of fact, let me undo all of that. I'm gonna hit R, Y. All right, you see how it's starting to light just basically one side, okay, RX, because I wanted to show a little bit on her face. There we go, okay. You can even go into your, your object properties and do all of this here. Like when I was doing this on the X just then, I can just rotate this on the X right here so much faster. All right, so let's use that instead. I'm gonna rotate a little bit more. Okay, now let's go back to our camera. Now you see the difference? Now there's no light source here, all right? So even though I have a sun in there, I may want a little more light in her face. So let's put in the point light. I'm gonna bring that point light up. I can't see it, so let me go see it because that drives me. All right, pull it forward a little bit. We're gonna pull it back some because I don't want it to completely light her face up. And I'm gonna beef it up to 60. Bring the specularity down to 0.2. I'm, I'm gonna cut on contact shadows, put the custom on, and then I'm gonna find the space that I want for the custom. There we go. So now there's enough light there and ta-da. Now when we hit F12, again, this is about finding the space you want. So now there's a, a, a way to, this, uh, to light it. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So now for the sake of it, I wanna show you something else and I'm gonna add a new collection. So I'm gonna go up here, click new, add collection. I'm gonna name it background. All right, so now I'm gonna hit control, uh, shift A. And I'm gonna go up to mesh. Is it mesh? No, I'm gonna go to image and image as planes. Now, this may not be set up on your on your thing. So you're gonna go to edit, preferences, add-ons, go up to the search bar and put in image. All right, and when you put in image, it should show you import, export, image as planes. Okay, you're gonna turn that on and then we're gonna do this. Shift A, image, image as planes. Now, I'm gonna go in, let's say, I'm trying to remember where I have something yet. Um, with ROD. Let's just say I want to put in some background. So I'll just go to, I'll just go here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on so I can see my images. And let's say, I don't know, I want this in my background. 
So when I cut it on, I'm gonna click it, it's in there. We're gonna rotate it, all right? And because it comes in a certain way, you see how that looks? I'm gonna push it back some because I don't want it completely in the shot. Let's say I want it in the shot, so I know the shot's over there. I'm gonna beef it up to say the 10, all right? So, no, let me undo that, go five. There we go, all right, that's better. Bring it up some because I want it to be kind of behind. I want it to be behind her, but I also want it to be back. All right, I'm gonna slide this over. Rotate it on the Z. It's reflecting the light also. Now, when you go into the actual material properties, this thing has an alpha on it and all of that. I'm gonna actually disconnect this alpha. I don't want it. All right. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna turn that oh, turn the blend mode it's under the settings. I'm gonna turn the blend mode to opaque. Okay. Now, because there's no light source on it, I'm gonna I know this is weird. I'm gonna go up to emission and I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna, oh, it's, it's not working. Wait a minute, go into shading. Oh, I see what I did, Never mind. See exactly what I did, I took the whole image out. Dum dum. Okay, hold on, let me go back to the image. All right, I'm gonna turn the alpha off. All right, so now let's go back to the layout. I'm gonna turn this to zero, because I don't need that. All right, so, Find, I'm gonna find it, find it, find it, because I didn't put it where I should have put it. So let's let's, let's put it back. I'm gonna go 90. Push it back some. 90. Rotate. All right. Now I'm gonna hit G because I just want it to be in the background. All right. So now understand this is not lit. So I want it to be lit. The problem with trying to light it <clears throat> with the emission, because I know I should have known better than that, is that the emission doesn't always show very well so say i want a light on that so i'm gonna hit because it's selected make sure you select that thing hit shift s and you want to go to cursor to select it so i hit two okay and i'm going to hit shift a again i'm going to add in an area light now this area light i'm going to actually i don't want it that way negative all right I'm gonna push it back i'm gonna make it a little bigger I'll beef it up to like 1000 okay bring it up again I do want it the other way. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna bring a certain level of light to it. <clears throat> I'm gonna take it to 120 this time. We don't need to be that bright. All right, so I gave it a little light. All right, so now when I hit F12, and this is just a way to do it. Now it doesn't always come out as well as you want, but I'm gonna show you something with the camera real quick, and then we're gonna be done because this went way longer than I wanted it to. But that's pre pretty much a good way to go about doing it. If you just want to put an image back there, now. If you feel like that doesn't look good, that's cool. Now, go into your camera object, click your camera, go into your camera tab, click it. There's a fit, the thing here that says depth of field. Open it up, click depth of field. Now, you see she went blurry. There is a eyedropper here. Hit your eyedropper, click your, click your picture, okay? And then down here, you have f-stop, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna move that f-stop until it starts to show my object, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to click the picture. I meant to click her. Click her, and we're gonna bring the f-stop back to 2.8. <clears throat> now, we made that blurry, and she's in focus, but we can go up some so we can get the whole person in the focus. There we go. Now, it made that blurry in the background. Again, play with this until you get it kind of where you want it to be, and then we can hit F12, and here's your image. Sometimes it takes a while because you got all these extra things. In. So that's what your image is going to, this, this is just one way to see your image look a certain way. So there it is. And I hope that that helps someone in some fashion or form. I, I really know I kind of rambled and bambled a little bit. So with that being said, man, test, 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 play, 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 figure out the things the way you want to do them and nothing but love from this side.